polymers are can be either amorphous or crystalline. In fact, a given polymer is never fully amorphous or fully crystalline. Mm, a given sample of polymer may have regions of amorphous phage and regions of crystalline phage. Such a state is called semi-crystalline. Semi crystalline. So, here a schematically a two dimensional schematic of a semi crystalline polymer is shown. What you should note here is that the crystals form by folding of the chain. You can see this blue chain or the red chain are folded. So, the first point is that there are both amorphous region, you can see the amorphous plus crystalline region. So, where we have uh, I am showing this parallel chains. I am trying to represent uh, crystalline region and where I have shown um, these randomly wiggling chains that is the amorphous region in the same polymer sample. Then the crystalline region the crystals form by chain folding. by folding of chains which really means and this is a very very important point that length of a given chain is much much longer than length of the crystal. So, for example, the green chain if you see is much much longer than the length of the green crystal which is much smaller. So, the chains are much longer than the dimensions of the crystal. Chains are much longer than the dimensions of the crystal. they belong to. This is a very very important point historically as well because this was a big issue when Stodinger proposed the macromolecule or long chains as basic structure of polymers. Because when crystal structure was determined using x-ray diffraction the unit cell size and the crystal size was found to be much smaller than the chain size. This led to the confusion that how come in a, in a small unit cell or in a small crystal long chains can fit. So, then this folding mechanism was thought of and gave an explanation for um, long chains fitting into a smaller unit cells or smaller crystals. So, chains are much longer than crystal they belong to and a given chain if you see for example, the green chain is part of both crystalline and amorphous region. So, a given chain may belong to both crystalline and amorphous regions and at the same time if you look at a given crystal. So, for example, this crystal look at this crystal this is a single crystal, but then part of it is coming from the blue chain and the part of it is coming from the red chain. So, a given crystal 
can be formed from more than one chain. So, a given crystal consists of more than one chains. So, these are basic aspects of a semi crystalline polymer. A factor called degree of crystallinity is defined which is simply mass of crystalline region by total mass of the polymer sample. This tells us that in a semi crystalline polymer what fraction is crystalline and what fraction is amorphous. Instead of mass fraction one can use volume fraction as well. Now, what are the factors? There are certain aspects of polymer, uh, um, certain aspects of uh, crystallization of polymers which depend upon the structure of uh, polymer, structural aspects of polymer. So, these factors are now listed. So, one of the factors is length of the chain. If you have long chain, that is, if you have high degree of polymerization, then these chains are less likely to crystallize. This is simply because long chains are more likely to get entangled, more likely to get entangled and form amorphous amorphous regions. So, longer chains are less likely to crystallize. Another factor which affects is branching. If you recall, there is a polymer backbone and on that backbone sometimes you can have side branches. We have discussed this. So, if you have now branched chains like this, it will be more difficult to fold them and pack them periodically. So, this branches will come in the way of packing, crystalline packing of the polymer chains. So, branched chains are less likely to crystallize. Now, if you have copolymers, then we discussed variety of copolymers, random, block, craft and alternating. You can see that in random copolymer, the monomers, the black and the blue circles are now representing monomers. So, the monomers come in some sort of random sequence. So, a given chain itself has random arrangement of monomers. So, crystallinity is much less likely. So, it will not be forming a crystalline structure. The block copolymers also has monomer blocks of monomers coming in a random sequence. So, this is also unlikely to form crystalline polymer. Graft polymer is like a branched polymer you can see and these branches will come in the way of packing like a crystalline structure. So, the only alternating copolymer in which the monomers are alternating has an inherent uh, periodicity within the chain itself and then one can think of folding and periodically arranging them. So, this may crystallize. We have discussed tacticity or stereoisomerism and if there is a special side group, those special side group can come um, on either side of the main backbone. If they are coming randomly on either side, then you have atactic. If they are coming alternately on each side, you have syndiotactic. And if they are coming all on the same side, it is isotactic. You can see that if in an atactic chain or in an atactic polymer, since because of the randomness of the side group, the main backbone or the main chain itself is random and it will not be possible to arrange them in a crystalline form. So, atactic and will not be crystallizing, whereas syndiotactic because it is coming alternately, 
so has an inherent periodicity within the chain and one can think of packing them in a crystalline way and same is true for the isotactic. The final factor which affects uh, crystallization of polymers is plasticizers. Sometimes low molecular weight additives are added to uh, polymers to prevent crystallization. Crystalline regions, the crystalline polymers are usually brittle. Crystalline implies brittleness. Whereas, amorphous leads to lends plasticity to the polymer, plasticity. So, they can be deformed easily. So, these low molecular weight additives are called plasticizers because they prevent the chains, they come in between the chains and prevent them from coming together. So, that they, therefore, a crystalline periodic packing of these chains are not possible and by promoting amorphousness they make the plastic or make the polymer more plastic. So, that is why they are called plasticizers. So, some uh, well known uh, plasticizers and uh, polymers made out of those plasticizers are celluloid which has nitrocellulose as its polymer, but camphor is added as plasticizer. Another uh, polymer cellophane has cellulose as its uh, main chain, but glycerol is added as plasticizers. So, both camphor, camphor and glycerol these are plasticizers in these polymers and they promote, they promote amorphous structure.